Aerial refueling is an incredibly precise and challenging maneuver to master. It's the aeronautical equivalent of hitting a bullseye with a dart in the middle of a windstorm. Fighter jets travel far from home to unfamiliar terrain, and aerial refueling allows jets to fly longer and further. Here is how it's done. Aerial refueling is the process of transferring fuel from a tanker to a receiver mid-air. Though this explanation may sound simple, the procedure is not easy. The tanker has a relatively small area to safely refuel an aircraft. Going too far would require the two aircraft to realign, costing precious time and, of course, fuel. Breaching the area, on the other hand, could damage not just the refueling equipment, but the aircraft themselves in a potentially fatal collision. Just how fatal? One documented collision in 1966, known as the Palomaris Incident, resulted in both planes being destroyed, seven out of the 11 crew members losing their lives, and the receiver aircraft's radioactive payload contaminating the crash site. Militaries decide refueling logistics based on the aircraft being flown, but there are two prevailing methods of aerial refueling. The most common one is the probe and drogue refueling method. The tanker aircraft deploys a long, flexible hose to transfer the fuel to the receiving aircraft. Now you might be wondering, how do they keep this hose from flailing uncontrollably in the air? They use a drogue. This is a fitting at the end of the hose resembling a shuttlecock. Aside from stabilizing the hose mid-flight, drogues also come equipped with a funnel, allowing the hose to dock properly with the receiving aircraft. The receiver aircraft is fitted with retractable probes, which are rigid arms placed either on an aircraft's nose or fuselage, where it can receive fuel via the drogue. Part of the reason why this is the most common method for performing aerial refueling is that virtually any aircraft can be configured to act as a tanker or receiver. Some planes can even act as both with the use of buddy pods. This would allow a fleet without dedicated tanker support to extend the range of specific aircraft in the fleet, eliminating the need for the entire fleet to return to base for refueling. The second method for performing aerial refueling is through the use of a flying boom. Unlike the probe and drogue method, this requires integrated equipment and a dedicated operator on board the tanker. So what is a flying boom exactly? It's a rigid retractable tube or boom with movable flight control surfaces. At the end of this tube is a nozzle, which the boom operator on the tanker aircraft must carefully insert into the receptacle of the receiving aircraft. The flying boom gets its name from its flight control surfaces. These are movable airfoils used to control the boom by creating aerodynamic forces. Attempting to use a fully mechanical system would not offer nearly the same amount of precision and control during missions that require high-speed, high-altitude flight. As fast as fighter jets are, they burn through fuel even faster. For instance, if a McDonnell Douglas F-15 operates at full speed with its afterburners engaged at sea level, it would burn up to 23,000 gallons of fuel an hour. At this rate, it could burn through its entire fuel supply in just about four minutes. Aerial refueling enables aircraft to travel further and sometimes even faster. Any fuel lost on the way to a certain point can simply be topped up, allowing them to operate over a much longer range. For highly specialized espionage aircraft, this could spell the difference between a successful mission and a dud. For instance, when the U.S. Air Force's B-2 bomber fleet flew over 14,000 miles round trip from Missouri to Afghanistan, they refueled multiple times mid-flight with the help of 15 tankers from five bases on three continents over 44 hours of flight time, demonstrating that no destination is too far.